you really are here, Nivellet. I didn't think you were going to have free time this hour of the day. Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linny. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Aw, Pyman's glad that you remembered. Thank you for keeping us on your mind, what with you being busy and all. Alright, let's have it then. How was Fontaine actually saved? The whole business is still quite the mystery to us. Um... It is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. Whoa! So that's what happened? Fosalor destroyed the divine throne of the Hydro Archon and restored your power to you, transforming you into a fully-fledged elemental dragon sovereign! But Paimon still doesn't quite get what you did to save the Fontanians from dissolving. For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the Hydro Element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the Primordial Sea with constitutions similar to that of mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood, after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the primordial sea. Fossilor must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone! Yeah! And in a manner of speaking, Fosalor finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people too! <laughs> It seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring Narwhal. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Guess Fosalor had Fontanians in mind the whole time. In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans. Ah, uh, hang on a second. Paimon suddenly got another question. Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yeah! Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge! In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Yeah, about that. Risley said Farina has already left. What's that all about? Ah, oh, Lady Farina. The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me before leaving the Opera House. I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. 
After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired and needed to rest. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved out of the opera house. Not unlike how an ordinary person might. Um, but she's still got a place to stay, right? You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. What about you then? What are your plans now that you've regained your full powers as the Hydro Dragon? After Fosalor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem, which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where- As I am now, I have full command over New Musia, and it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. <laughs> oh, that's right! They say you've given it to the knave as a diplomatic gift or something! Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's divine throne is now no more, and I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Ugh, what complicated considerations! Paima thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the Knave and as an apology to child! Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume. I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, Natlan can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlan have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Natlan is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlan. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. <laughs> uh, hang on a sec. Paimon's still got a question about the Gnosis. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh... In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. Next. Hmm. 
The all-devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power. What it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons, but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young. And I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense. Which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger, then. That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of the Third Descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paimon just thought they looked like chess pieces. How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui. If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine... I guess that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element-compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the Third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh... Like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels creepy comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck. <sighs> Once Child recovers, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way. I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. All right. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now. Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But she sacrificed herself in the end as a god, and she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, 
is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us.